and we were Red Cross ambulance drivers overseas and we joined the uh, British Red Cross because the Canadians didn't need any drivers because the Canadians had their own drivers connected with their uh, regiments and everything. So uh, we used to go and, and meet the uh, planes coming across from the continent and they'd have casualties on there and, and uh, they put them on the ambulance and we'd take them to the, uh, uh, the uh, another train. It was right around the time that penicillin was invented and a lot of the, the boys were uh, treated with penicillin and uh, <laughs> and they, they, uh, they uh, so they were taken to special trains and uh, but that's what, it, what our job was over there, driving uh, ambulances for the British Red Cross us. Yeah. Uh, first of all, when we arrived over there uh, in England, and the, this was something that was really funny, when we got there we were met by our own commandant who was in charge of the Canadian girls over there, and uh, we were waiting in Paddington Station to uh, be uh, posted out from there and uh, everybody and uh, the people in Britain used to get the biggest kick out of uh, the Canadian girls. We always had so much luggage that it wasn't even funny. We had a, a, a trunk a trunk and a dunnage bag and a, <laughs> we had so much luggage but anyway we were sitting there in Paddington station waiting for the train and there was an air raid alarm well it's the first one we'd ever heard and we didn't know what we were supposed to do so our commandant said now you can go down in the air raid shelter if you want to but she said nobody pays any attention to it anymore because they're so used to having these um, uh, alarms you know so we stayed there on the right on the, where the tracks are and eventually that uh, that apparently they they'd hit a theater that was quite a few miles away and uh, so anyway we uh, took the train and went out to um, it must oh gee it must have been near Swindon that was where we were posted to anyway and uh, there were 90 90 uh, girls and each one of us had an ambulance that we serviced um, not too much but we served, uh, greased it and oiled it and all that sort of thing and um, we were billeted in a castle, Charlton Park and um, this was a castle that had belonged to Charles II and um, so uh, we uh, stayed there and uh, learned to drive Austin ambulances and uh, in England it was it was really something because all the roads are so small and they're all country, little country lanes a lot of them and we uh, had quite a time learning to drive these ambulances because they were pretty big and uh, so finally we got through that that was when we first uh, before we we went into regular service with the ambulance and so we got uh, transferred from there that was Charlton Park and we got transferred from there to Swindon where that was when we there were 90 of us in this camp and uh, we uh, uh, we had a sergeant there and she, uh, they had a, a roster where they tell where your names were all listed, and as the as the duties came down, where you, the girls would go out in the ambulances and meet trains and everything, uh, you'd get closer, and then finally it would be your turn to go out. And we drove, I guess. Well, we took we we took some East Indian boys to Oxford. And that was about 45 miles from there. And uh, they had to have a special diet, so they were sent to Oxford where they had dif a different billet, uh, uh, they had a different uh, place to be billeted to what the rest of the, and some of them went on the trains and right straight through to hospitals. And um, 
so then, um, then when we uh, were all, uh, we all left Swindon, um, two of us were billeted down in on the Isle of Wight, and we we spent the rest rest of the time on the Isle of Wight, and uh, not doing very much uh, picking up the laundry and uh, the fish and chips. <laughs> And uh, so, anyway, um, then uh, sent home until November because uh, I guess there was, there was so many coming across and we were on the Queen Elizabeth to come across and uh, we were really treated quite special, which was very nice. And when, when we went overseas, when I went overseas anyway, uh, I was a second lieutenant and that's what they gave us our, our rank so that it would help when we were away from home, which was very nice. And uh, so we stayed on the Isle of Wight until uh, November, and then we took our ambulances back to London. And uh, so I managed uh, to, I had a, an old Ford ambulance, and so help me, it was a terrible, terrible ambulance. But anyway, I got right in the middle of Belgrave Square in London, and it stalled. <laughs> so the bus driver, the British bus driver on this double-decker bus, he says, come on, Canada, get that thing off the road. <laughs> so anyway, that's where we left the ambulances. And so um, this friend of mine who I was stationed with at, uh, at uh, the Isle of Wight, we had, we had to go into a special building along there. I believe the, the building that we went into had been the residence for the Duchess of Kent. These were all very nice, beautiful houses all around the square. So anyway, um, so they 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 were giving us our our um, oh shoot me called you know the, 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 your the things you you sew on your to sh to show where you've been um, huh. Oh, I forget what they called it. But anyway, uh, we almost got a, an African one. And I said to Fran, we should take it just just for fun. But it wasn't. We didn't. We didn't. We told her we had been in Africa in the African campaign, you know. And uh, so we came home on the Queen Elizabeth. And as I say, I can get seasick on anything, including the Queen Elizabeth. And when we got back home after... Uh, uh, when we got arrived at Halifax, um, there were all these little boats all out in the harbor, all whistling and and blowing the horns and everything to for us. There were a lot of troops on board, of course, and uh, when we were arriving, they were welcoming us. I guess every time the ships came in. Mm. 